What is going on, Jet fans? Matt O'Leary back with the reaction of the New York Jets first round late on really at this point Friday morning, but it is late Thursday night. Just got back from the main event in Farmingdale. Myself, Ryan, and Green Bean were live from the main event in Farmingdale. We had an absolute blast. First and foremost, thank you to everyone who came out and supported. Thank you to everyone who watched the live stream and hung out with us. It was so much fun. I love doing this every single year. And the Jets gave us a pretty good surprise. So let's go through it. First, the New York Jets on the clock at pick number 10. Or, well, their selection was pick number 10. The Jets would trade back. So pretty chalk start. First four picks were pretty chalky. Then you would get uh, Joe Alt at pick five. The Giants pass on J.J. McCarthy and instead go with Malik Neighbors. Okay. Then you get uh, offensive lineman J.C. Latham off the board to Tennessee. Okay, like these are making sense for the most part. You would think uh, Atlanta, they probably want to trade out, right? Wrong. They stay and take Michael Penix. An absolute shocker. That is the first shocker of the night. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, Romo Dunze goes off the board at pick number nine. I thought he was going to fall to the New York Jets. I thought we were going to live in a world where Romo Dunze was going to fall to the Jets at pick number 10. Jets on the clock at 10. They trade back one spot with the Minnesota Vikings. So first, let's get our reaction. This was the live reaction to the trade back. They're going to get, big, they're going to get a lot of picks now. They're going to get a hole right now. We're going to trade somebody back. Wants, yeah, yeah. Because, Nobody got the Michigan quarterback. Oh, the Jets traded. The Jets traded back a pick with Minnesota. The Jets traded back a pick with Minnesota. The Jets traded back. The Jets traded pick number 10 and the recently acquired pick 203, the sixth round pick. And the New York Jets received pick 111, a fourth round pick, pick 129, and pick uh, 157, which is a fifth round pick. So the Jets drop one spot. Vikings come up. They take J.J. McCarthy, kind of, you know, kind of chalky, kind of expected. Uh, but the New York Jets now armed with pick 11. They have their third round pick and they have three fourth round picks and a fifth round they're now to work with in the NFL draft. And with Brock Bowers on the board, with Talisi Fuanga on the board, two names that were probably most commonly mocked to the New York Jets. They go Olufashanu, and I like it. I really like the pick for the New York Jets. This was the live reaction at the main event, in case you missed it. Come on. From the crowd, you got the crowd. I like that the Jets went offensive line. That was my preference. It was trade down and go offensive line. Now, I didn't think it would be Olu Fashanu. He is a left tackle. Now, Fawanga, we talked about a lot. Right side of the line, right tackle, right guard. Troy Fatanu, who would go later in the draft, is someone who's played left tackle, can also probably play on the interior as well. But if you're looking for, like, left side of the offensive line is going to be, like, a textbook built in a lab left tackle that's Olu Fashanu. he in my opinion is by far the best pass blocking offensive lineman in this class does he have a little bit to learn as a run blocker yeah no doubt he is young though at 21 years of age and here's some really good numbers from Olu Fashanu. sorry the setup isn't how I normally have it because I had to break everything down and bring it to the main event and it is 1 a.m. Currently, the clock just went from 12.59 to 1 a.m. at the time of recording this video. So we'll be back to normal tomorrow, but just had to do a makeshift setup here to get the reaction out. Uh, but here was his three years at Penn State. He did not allow a single sack over that time. He allowed one quarterback hit and 16 quarterback hurries over that span. Really impressive stuff. Um, he's a freak athlete. Uh, he made Bruce Feldman's. Uh, freak list at number 23, he wrote running a 4.9740 this offseason, and he had a 4.63 sh uh, shuttle time. That 40 would have tied for the best at the NFL Combine for all offensive linemen there. Uh, he has the height. 
He has really good weight. What did I say before? It is 6'6", 312. So he's a little bit on the lighter side. He's about 55 pounds lighter than what Makai Becton was coming into the league and stylistically very different, which was the surprise because I thought the Jets would go with like the mauler in the run game, the grind it out kind of mean, nasty offensive lineman. And that's not really Olu Fashanu. That's more Talisi Fawanga, which is why if they went offensive line, that's the, the route I thought they were going to go. But again, if you want a left tackle who's more of a technician with his hands and is going to be you know, able to fight these quick speed rushers off the edge, I think Olu fits that bill. And he, who better to learn from than Morgan Moses and Tyron Smith? And as I've said for forever in this draft process, Tyron Smith is not giving you a healthy season, a fully healthy season. It is just not in the cards. It hasn't happened since 2015. He's going to miss time. Morgan Moses has a torn pectoral. He got offseason surgery. They're both 33 years old. They both only have one year left on their deal. And now Olu is going to be in a spot where he doesn't necessarily have to play immediately, but he is going to get on the field and he's going to play because they have two Band-Aid tackles. And this is a pick that's going to help them depth-wise in 2024 and help them beyond that. And like I said, there's a very, very good chance that he is going to play a lot this season. And now, which gets into the second part of this conversation, with what the New York Jets did in the NFL draft by having the third-round pick and three fourth-round picks, you can bet your ass the Jets are trading up tomorrow. I would be floored floored if the Jets just stuck stuck it out all day tomorrow and only picked that pick number 72. And then on day three, we're like, yeah, we're going to take all our swings. You know, you have the, the three fourths, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh. They have eight picks in this draft. They have seven picks left in this NFL draft. They don't have a second rounder. This is the, t- the package your picks together. Give up your three, give up a four, maybe give up two of the fours and jump up into the middle of the second round, and that's where you target your wide receiver. I was shocked to see Ricky Pearsall, a wide receiver target I've given you for months, who I thought in round two, but no, he's not going to be available because he's a San Francisco 49er. He goes off the board to pick number 31. But Roman Wilson, Vlad McConkey, uh, A.D. Mitchell has made it. Troy Franklin has made it to the second round. There are going to be names available on day two for the New York Jets to go up and get. And who that guy is, really hard to say right now. But overall, the Jets move back. Only a spot. They get additional capital. They have the ability to move around tomorrow, which I think they do. And they get a guy who is going to be your left tackle of the future on a line that was really bad last year. I get it. On paper, you have all five spots filled, left tackle, left guard, center, right guard, right tackle, not long-term, and the injury history with those guys, not great. I thought it was going to be Fuongo or Bowers, and the Bowers boys are not handling it well. If you checked in on Twitter, it's not going over very well on the Bird app. Um, they are they are very, very upset about that. And he goes to the Raiders, who just took a tight end in the second round last year, Michael Mayer. So uh, we'll see what their plan on offense is there. For the Jets, I'm excited about this move. Let me know in the comments. I'm Matt. I'll catch you guys next time.